You're listening to a podcast from 702. You're with Azania Mosaka on 702. You know, 2020 was really historic in more ways than one. Um, we will bring you a series uh, because we, we are still building the questions around how it has affected the education system. There's no doubt that the education landscape has changed permanently as a result of COVID-19. Um, it has pushed schools, teachers, learners and parents to really new and unfamiliar territory and many have had to adapt uh, to teaching and learning methods that might not have been considered before you know so it's pushed us into a new area so in the past year distance schooling has taken off and it seems like we're also seeing a rise in parents switching their children to homeschooling full time so today we're talking about homeschooling um, and this comes on a day where lots of uh, private schools reopened and uh, public schools will be reopening in two weeks um, as school as as teachers in public schools are now going back to prepare, of course, for the year ahead. We need to continue acting responsibly and bring down these numbers so that our schools can reopen under uh, better circumstances. So we have Louise Squinwinkel. She is the MD of Optimi um, Home, and um, they are one of the biggest homeschooling uh, providers in the country. And we also have Nomtu Linyai. She is a blogger um, at Such Is Wisdom and Nomti is homeschooling three of her children. Good afternoon, Nomti. Hi. Hi, Aza. How are you? I'm good. Great to have you on the show. And let's Thank also you go for to... having me. Great. Louise, hello. Also, welcome to you. Hello, good afternoon, Adonia. Thank you for having me. It's great to talk about this as we give parents, you know, a tease, a, a sense of practically how all of this works. But Louise, I want to hear from you about what the impact of the last year, what has it been on your on your business? Um, so Adonia, at Optimi Home, we own the Impact brand. So Impact is one of the biggest homeschooling providers in the country. And we grew to about 25,000 learners in 2020. Um and what we saw happening was that the parents out there who were considering this actually thought, well, this is the year to do it. When everything started going, hey, why? No one knew when schools were going to open again. Those parents said, well, this is a sign. I'm going to sign up this year. But what we also saw happening was that parents, after they had to homeschool their children in, the, in Term 2, a lot of the parents found that their children are actually flourishing at home. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we saw some of those parents also signing up and saying, but clearly this is the better option for my child. Um, So that is absolutely what we saw coming through in 2020. And just a general awareness for the public out there that there is something else than traditional schooling that we all know that might be better suited to your child. Yeah, and I find that different children um, responded to this distance learning in different ways. Some absolutely loved it. They were able to easily just take ownership of their time, ownership of their learning. And then others didn't quite acclimatize as easily. So there are lots of possibilities out there, right, that are open to parents to consider. Absolutely. And I think you've, you've, it's something that's so important. I want to say to any parent who's listening, out of your two or three children, some of them might be the perfect homeschoolers and others might not be. So it, it's certainly still a niche market, but there are lots of options for, for parents to consider. And I think it can be a very overwhelming concept for any new parent because there are so many different types of homeschooling. I mean, it ranges from where you as the parent literally put together your own curriculum and you decide on a daily basis what your children will be doing to going with an organization like an impact, which is a service provider who will give you everything that you need. You just need to take care of the schooling. So they'll give you the assessment, the lesson material, um, and this will range from being online lesson material, live online lessons and physical books, um, and then also academic support and administrative support in terms of registering you with an exam body so you can write your matric certificate, mm-hmm. um, things like that. But it's, but it's very so much. So inside the world of homeschooling, it's not clear cut and it's not a one size fits all approach. Definitely not. So, the, and there is a difference between homeschooling and online learning because we are seeing some uh, schools. Um, uh, uh, or, or, or the big uh, ch- chain schools now starting to offer online learning? Definitely. So online learning is just a method. 
So in terms of homeschooling, you could have a complete online approach where your child spends the whole day looking at life lessons, doing everything on a computer, using e-books, where you could go for a completely traditional approach where you don't use any technology um, at all and where you do all the lecturing and you only use hard copy books. And the only thing that's really happened in 2020 was that schools used to be very traditional in their focus, where they used very few online tools, and now the majority of schools have been pushed towards having to teach online um, and having to use a Google Classroom and other online methodologies to get the material out to their learners. Mm -hmm. So online schooling is just a method of schooling, where homeschooling is so much more and most homeschoolers would use some online schooling as part of their approach, if that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Nomti, let me come to you. How easy has it been to navigate this world? So you're homeschooling your three kids. um, And how did you find the experience of homeschooling uh, as you started off? Look, Azania, just like anything that you start off, in the beginning, it was completely overwhelming. Um, it actually started off with, you know, 2020 and COVID happening. Um, and we then, you know, decided to first start off with, you know, concurrently with the school. Um, and then we decided, you know, we've actually been thinking about it as a family for quite a while. Um, we had different um, ideologies from what a traditional school would have in terms of the approach to learning. Um, so we took the plunge and we really took a deep of faith. Um, being a Christian family, we took a leap of faith and say, look, we, we're going to do this thing. And in the beginning, like like any other parent, I'm sure that's experiencing that it was, it was like a, I felt like a fish out of water. The kids mm-hmm. also felt like they wanted to go back. They, they just did not know how to handle the situation. But with anything, you know, you get your rhythm, you get your vibe as a family. And, you know, now they're thriving. All three of them are thriving. Oh, so good. Good to hear. <laughs> yeah. So, Louise, what should inform our curriculum choice? I think, again, that's a very personal choice. And I would say to parents is to do a lot of research on it. There's loads available on Facebook groups and online. Um, we follow the CAPS curriculum uh, because we believe it's important to be able to not lose any traction. So if you're coming from a from a school setup, you can easily go on to MBAC. And if it's three years later down the line, you want to integrate back into mm. a traditional school setup, you can do that. And also our aim is for our learners to do their NEC, their matric certificate. So we register with the CAR, which is an exam body in South Africa where you can do your matric certificate too. Um, so that's why we follow a very traditional CATS curriculum. But there are loads of curriculums out there. Um, we just a uh, very South African-based curriculum. Yes. And Nomti, how did you make that decision? Did you go with CAPS? Um, yeah, there's a lot of research that one needs to do in terms of um, choosing the, the, the kind of curriculum that you um, would take. Um, excuse me, different, um, different curriculums also use different methodologies. So, you know, with in the beginning, I started using um, an IEB, actually, curriculum-based curriculum because I wanted to just to get the optionality to get, get my child back into um, traditional schools should I want to. Mm. But since having made the decision that I actually just want to do this full time and, you know, for them to, to do it to the trick, I've taken um, more of an eclectic approach, but through a service provider who then um, would choose different curriculums from different um, countries. So um, they would use, say, a single um curriculum and then they would use, you know, Cambridge English or something like that and they would put it um, for you they put it together for, for me um, because I like the structure. I like to know what, I, what I'm supposed to be doing. Being a new homeschooling mom, I need to know that I'm actually covering the full curriculum and I'm doing it correctly. So I needed the structure, but I also liked the fact that, you know, it, it covers different elements differently from what I was using last year. So I absolutely loved the curriculum that I used last year. It was very simple to implement as well. Mm. It was very, it's very simple, really. Once you, once you get over the nerves and the anxiety <laughs> of feeling like, <laughs> what am I doing? I'm not a teacher. Um, and I say this to my friends all the time. I'm like, actually, you are. You know, you, the first six years of any child are probably the hardest anyway. you you've taught your child how to do so much already. Um, And nobody taught you how to do that. You kind of get into it as a parent. Um, And then it just just becomes a follow through of that experience. So Mm. because my children are young, um, two, four and seven, um, my biggest anxiety was how am I going to have three small children in the house at the same time and try and homeschool? Um, 
but I also got a, a, a curriculum provider to do the, for the little ones. Okay. So they are more focused, yeah. And it's just play, but it's, it's structured play. And they really enjoy it. And, you know, even the little one, the two-year-old, she's learning so much. And, you know, I try and share that on the blog with the, with the parents to say, look, you know, this is a way that kids can have fun right. and they can be young and they can be at home. Mm. So, yeah. uh, Louise, parents' abilities... Um, <laughs> parents' qualifications. <laughs> what, what are the things? And, and and I suspect some of us think, oh, I don't have a diploma, I don't have a degree, I don't have a PhD. You know, would I be able to teach this? Uh, how much of my own understanding or my own uh, knowledge? How much of that do I need to have to be able to do this? Um, so please answer that. And also, just some of the things. What are the things that make parents successful at this? So, Zonia, I think, um, first of all, our curriculum is structured in a way where every single subject has a facilitator guide, and in the office we call that a dummy's guide to teach it. So it's been written in a way that anyone can pick it up and teach the subject. Mm. Um, then what we also advise our parents to do, look, I don't know if you've seen um, recently what a matric maths paper looks like, I had my trick maths, and <laughs> to me it looks like Greek now. If I had to teach that, I would, I would not know where to start. So what yeah. a lot of parents do as well, if there's a subject where they feel out of their depth, they enroll the assistance of a teacher to assist with that. And there are also, there are online teachers available, there are teachers who come to your house, there are teachers who you can go to in the afternoon, there are retired teachers, so there are loads of options um, in terms of that as well to support the parents. I think what makes the parents who are successful, really successful, are the ones who are not afraid to say, I need help. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones who would reach out to a teacher or if they're a client of ours, who would reach out to our academic team and say, help me, how do I explain this concept? This is what we're struggling with. There are amazing support groups um, in South Africa for homeschooling parents. And these parents support each other and help each other. So I think those are the parents who are successful, the ones who are actually not afraid to say, listen, I'm feeling a bit out of my desk. I need a bit of help. Um, and who then gets the help that's needed and not try and do everything on their own. Mm-hmm. So how do you know, how do parents know? Because I think this is one of the big questions. How do they know whether the child is learning, uh, that they are being effective in this teaching? So I think um, that is probably, you know your own child, um, and this is this is a question you should actually be asking any of the moms who are homeschooling. You can see that twinkle in the eye when they grow, so in concept, or when they know, and you can see oh, the, light, the light bulb moment when, when the concept has landed. Um, but we also, because we're a more traditional homeschooling curriculum, we do assess. So we give you assessments that you can use to ensure that your child is on track. Um, And if you don't feel comfortable marking it yourself from grade 10 to 12, we mark everything for you. But before that point, if you don't feel comfortable marking it yourself, you can also send it in to get a third party opinion or give it to a tutor to mark. So that's one of the ways we believe you can test continuously to see if, um, if they are on track. Yes, there's a listener who says, who should teach the child? Uh, who marks and does a learner fail? Um, so, because, you know, these are processes that come with that education that they get at school. Mm. Um, so, Nomti, how did you navigate these particular areas? Do you mark them yourself? Look, Look um, the, I think the one thing that really was a light bulb moment for me as a parent was exactly what... Um, is being shared to say that, you know, with your child, you really do know your child. So I, if you gave me a test, for an example, as just as, as a parent, and you gave it to me, I'd be able to tell you just off the back what my, my son knows and doesn't know because I know what I've taught him. And, I've, and there's, a, there's a follow-through all day long. Um, so that's, a, that's one of the benefits of homeschooling, that it doesn't start from like six to or, or eight to one. You know, we are learning continuously, and I always get an opportunity to, to test if you grasp the concept. Um, but there are there are tests that we do take, um, and there are there are ways in which you can test whether your child knows. But as a parent, I can I can attest to say that you would be able to know um, whether your child knows a concept or not, and, and it gives you an opportunity to where he's really flourishing. We like move on kind of thing, and he's ahead um, maybe even of his grade because of the fact that he knows that area very well. And where he struggles, we stay, and we I. It gives me an opportunity to really just sit and 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 make sure that a, a certain 
a concept is cemented. And the, 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 the support group is un- unbelievable. If you're struggling to explain something in a certain way, there are you know, parents that you can ask to say, this concept my child is not getting. Is there anyone else who's explained it differently? And then, you know, your child really gets to know it and see it from different perspectives because yeah. the, the knowledge is absolutely vast. But from that perspective, I'm very comfortable as a parent to say that I know what my child is learning. I can see, I can test. I'm always there to, to pick up on things um, that he doesn't know on. So I'm curious about the work homeschooling balance. You know, uh, <laughs> how how do we do that? How do you do it? Because, Nomti, you've just said that it's, it doesn't happen in the block the way we, we know school to happen, you know, in a day. It's yeah. not happening in yeah. that particular block. Um, you run a blog. Uh, you do other things. So how do yeah. you keep that balance? Is it not like burning the candle at both ends? Um, not for me, because there's structure. Um, so it, within all of this fluidity, there's structure. So there is a time of, for, for our family, and again, Homeschooling is one of those beautiful, um, you know, things that you can do any which way that you want. So this is particularly for our family, but I know families that do it differently and it, they thrive in that right. particular manner. So I think that's the one thing. The flexibility is just really something that people should embrace. But from our family, you know, my kids wake up <laughs> very early, unfortunately for me. So, the, you know, we start homeschooling very early at, at around, you know, to help us when they're ready sitting down. Um, we do have a structure. So I do structure it um, with time, especially with the older one. He does get to his like working slots and and um, play slots and you know break slots. So by one o'clock we're done um, with homeschooling and I can I can pick up my work um, after one and run everything that I need to run um, after that. So you can implement structure and the kids because kids are, you know, creatures of habit, they really get into it. It takes a week or two to get them into it, but then they know they should be sitting, who does what, how, and then, yeah, life goes on. Yes. And Louise, uh, what is the feedback from parents as far as that is concerned? So very similar. Um, I think what our parents are also telling us is that it's not necessarily a five or six hour school day. So especially Mm. in the lower grades, because you have the flexibility and you can really focus on what that individual child needs. You're going to go through concepts faster that they already know, and you're going to spend more time on the things where they need more attention. So our parents are saying on average, especially in the lower grades, it can take you two to three hours a day mm-hmm. in total if you don't take the break times into account and all of that. Um, and then they have more time to focus on e- extracurricular activities. So, for example, we offer a robotics course as well for learners who want to try that. Nice. Um, and then they actually have time to do those things as well. Or we have a lot of learners who's into gymnastics um, and sports stars, the golfers, um, dancers. And all those, uh, a lot of musicians as well, for them, they have that extra time to practice their instruments or do their sports um, because they're not at school for six hours uh, of the day. Mm. Uh, That's a good one, that if your child has a really big uh, uh, or is hugely committed to a particular sport or a discipline, that it allows this discipline to exist quite comfortably with their education. Mm. Um, Mm. And... The adjustment for little ones, because they, they're used to going to school, waking up every day. How do we help them transition into now being homeschooled? Do you have a guide for that, Louise, on how to to remove them from school and how to integrate them into this homeschooling process? So we have a few blog articles on our website uh, that people are welcome to check out with tips and tricks around how to integrate them into homeschooling. But just quickly, I think one of the most important things um, is structure. So to to create that structure and everything, I'm repeating um, a lot now, but a lot, it's about finding that structure and rhythm that works for your family, having a dedicated space in the house so they know this is where we're going to do our schooling now and sticking to that structure until you've figured it out. And soon they'll, they'll also get used to that. Mm. And costs, if we look at costs, I mean, there's also opportunity costs. You know, if you decide to devote yourself full time to this, you are losing out on earnings that you would have made if you if you did have uh, a job. How do you answer this question or what do we need to consider about the cost of homeschooling? I think that completely depends on what your situation is. Yeah. So if you're coming from a private school, you might find homeschooling very cost effective. 
um, or, a, or a more expensive public school. If you're coming from a free public school environment, it's going to feel to you like it's very expensive. Okay. So an impact curriculum, for example, start off if you only purchasing assessments, for example, for a grade one learner, it will start off at two and a half thousand rand for the full year. Mm. Um, versus if you're getting all the books and everything with it, it's about 5,400 rand for the year. Um, and in the trick, you'll go up to about 26,000 rand. That includes your exam fees. Um, grade 11 will cost about 16,000 rand if you include every, all the material, all the exams, everything. And then there'll be, um, there might be tutoring costs, depending on if you're going to use a tutor for certain subjects. Um, so I would say it completely depends on every family situation if they would find it cost effective. It also depends on how many additional um, products you add on. Mm. So if you're adding robotics and, and doing other extracurricular science projects and all sorts of things, all of that will, will add up. But, but I think a lot of it is more in your control. So you can decide as a parent, um, this is my budget and this is what I want to spend. Sure. Sure. So I've got to take headlines and let's wrap, ladies. Nomti, uh, where do people read up on your experience? Because you started a blog. At www.suchiswisdom.com. Such and I also is have wisdom. on all the social media platforms, Such is Wisdom. Wonderful. And Louise? Thank you. Uh, they can contact us at info at impact, I-N-T-A-Q dot C-O dot Z-A, or go through to our website, www.impact.co.za or phone us on 87 Thank you. Thank you so much to both of you. Uh, Louise Gwenfinkel, and she's the MD of Optima Home. And then also Nomti Linyai, blogger um, at Such is Wisdom. And she's the mother of three homeschooling them. Just an introductory chat to homeschooling because we are planning a series of looking, a series devoted to looking at the way in which the education landscape has changed. There is just so much going on where education is going at the moment. Uh, what this means, in fact, is uh, it means it, it's bringing about about some serious changes that we've got to be prepared that you're listening to a podcast from 702 you're with azania musaka on 702